அன்பாக ஒற்றறிய மாகாணத்தின் கல்வி அமைச்சர் ஸ்டீஃபன் லிஷே அவர்கள் எங்களோடு நேரடியாக இணைப்பில் கலந்து கொள்கிறார் குட் மார்னிங் மினிஸ்டர் குட் மார்னிங் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் மீ தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் ஃபார் ஜாயினிங் வித் அஸ் வி ஹவ் பிளான்டி ஆஃப் கொஷன்ஸ் டு ஆஸ்க் பட் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு ஸ்டார்ட் வித் அ வார்ம் அப் கொஷன் அபவுட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் வுட் யூ மைண்ட் டெல் அஸ் அ ஸ்மால் பேக்ரவுண்ட் ஆஃப் அபவுட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் யுவர் ஃபேமிலி யுவர் ஏர்லி எஜுகேஷன் அண்ட் ஹவு டு யூ கெட் இன் டு பாலிடிக்ஸ் Absolutely. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my uh, a dear friend of mine, Vijay Thalagasalam, reached out to me uh, to encourage me to call. And obviously, the first uh, Tamil elected in our party, uh, one of two, we're very proud to serve with him. So thank you, Vijay, if you're listening, for the idea to call it the show. Um, I, am, um, I am a uh, son of immigrants. My parents came to this country in the late 50s from Italy seeking economic opportunity. And You know, they came here like many Canadians uh, to try to embrace the freedom, the democracy and the opportunity of Canada. And I really believe it's now incumbent on people like me, generational public servants like myself and Vijay and others, to give back and to serve the next generation. And so I serve as the youngest Minister of Education. Uh, I believe uh, that we need to have a focus, a generational focus, to make sure young people can afford homes, they could get good jobs. and get access to a very high quality education that's my vision and i'm really proud to serve with our caucus uh, this is a, a caucus that i think embraces the very best of canada the most women elected the first two tamils elected in ontario history uh, and i think it rep- reflects uh, the the priorities and values of ontarians hard working law abiding patriotic and people that want their families to be safe and get ahead Thank you for the small introduction minister uh, I think uh, we are talking today about their strike what are the main reasons right. for the strike what is your version yeah well, in this negotiation our objective is to advance a few principles the first is folks your children should be in class full stop it is unacceptable that the teacher union leaders continue to strike on the backs of your kids your children's education should be protected they should be in schools they ought to be learning and so we stand with parents against the escalation that's why we announced financial support it's called the support for parents initiative this is about putting up to $60 per day per child in your pocket to help you in the short term as this goes on have a bit more financial support a few more bucks in your pocket uh to find child care because it's very expensive uh around the GTA and across Ontario the second is at the negotiating table we're trying to make the case that we believe our educators are very valuable we 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 are defending and prioritizing education we're spending more in public education than any government in Ontario's history we're spending one on track to spend over 1.2 billion dollars more this year than we did last year we're spending more under Doug Ford's progressive conservatives than Kathleen Wynne or Dalton McGinty did by far. So we're going to continue to invest. But I believe that if we're going to be putting more money in the system, it should be going into building new schools, into our classrooms, into our students, not into higher pay and wages and benefits for teachers who, as you will know, make for a high school teacher on average $92,000 a year. Just, I'm just talking about wages, by the way. not even talking about the pension or any other the benefits. So we pay them well and I want to pay them well. I want to retain talent. But you can't tell me we're being unfair by offering a 1% increase. They want much more, a 1.5 billion dollar increase. Minister, and they uh, also uh, want uh, uh, pardon me to just very quickly uh, sure. just uh, they also want to maintain the form of hiring where 100% of hiring in Ontario is based for new teachers is based on your seniority. how long you've been in the union in the union folks that doesn't serve your child what should when we want to elevate and promote an educator and select a teacher to be your child's uh, educator in the school it should be based on merit on qualification and on equity uh, and so this is what we're fighting for at the table uh, and i really think we need the governments to uh, work hard to make sure taxpayers are not on the hook that we're not going to raise taxes on middle class people low income seniors to pay for higher benefits and in tax and 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 wages uh for you know public servants teachers who make 
are in and around $90,000 a year, and we think we pay them well. The union, the teachers' union, have always mentioned about your, your claim that they are fighting for their pay raise only, but they have mentioned uh, several other things as well, as we mentioned earlier uh, in this show. Uh, one about the class size increase for both elementary and, and um, high schools. Your, your, your government has increased the class size, which affect the quality of the education which were given to those students. And uh, special need kids are getting affected by your cuts. So what, what is their stand on these issues? Yeah, well, let me just reject respectfully the premise. There have been, we have only increased spending in education. This government is spending more in special education for those kids than any government in Canadian history, in Ontario history. $3.1 billion. We just hired in the QP negotiation, which we got a deal with QP, as you know, many months ago, hundreds of EAs, these are the assistants, the education assistants that support those kids that need additional, um, you know, um, attention and, and compassion from their, uh, from educational assistants. We're hiring hundreds of them in the front of class. So, you know, I, I see it on the billboards by the unions, but I just got to say that is uh, not consistent with the facts. We're spending more and we're investing more to help give these kids a chance and to make sure that their parents know that we see value in these children. And they have dignity. So I just want to get that out. Special education is very important for me. I want to make sure we continue to invest in it, and we are, to the highest levels. We will continue. In fact, I was very proud to double, more than double, the funding for mental health for students in Ontario. And I did that very earlier on when I was appointed a couple months after my appointment. So we're making that a priority. With respect to classroom sizes under our government, we are maintaining the smallest classroom sizes in Canada for the earliest years of, uh, for the early years in high elementary school. We're maintaining with no change at all, full day kindergarten. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. We are protecting it. We're maintaining it. We're going to strengthen it, the full day kindergarten in Ontario, because it works. And when it comes to high school, this year, the classroom size average went from 22 22.5. That's where we're at this year. And we're negotiating, and my hope is that those numbers, we can keep classroom sizes low through innovative ways to achieve that. Because I want to see classroom sizes stay low, and I think we could still do that. So I just want to be clear. And in, and in, in elementary school, there's no change between grade one and grade three, as you know, no change in the early years, and a 0.8 increase from grade four to eight. That's what we're talking about, folks. Uh, for, for, for elementary school all in and for high school for this year. So again, there's a lot of misinformation about this. We're maintaining the lowest classroom sizes in Ontario, uh, in Canada rather, in the early years. We're keeping full day kindergarten. I put that in writing. And we're going to continue to invest more in education, $200 million on a four-year math strategy. We're going back to basics. We're, we're for the first time making financial literacy compulsory in the curriculum. Uh, and we're making a real emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and math. We want to give young men and especially women the opportunity to get into these uh, uh, growing industries and get access to good paying jobs. Minister, you have attended the private school, St. Michael's, and that school uh, class size was lower than what you are proposing now. Would you mind confirming us uh, your government bring back the average class size back to 22 to 1 as it was in their 2018-2019 academic year if if the union accept this as your your confirmation and if they withdraw the strike and if they put this as a condition to bring back the class size and um, taking off the mandatory learning uh, course uh, from from your um, government perspective would you mind considering those two two conditions uh, to be uh, tabled in the negotiations? Well, the teacher unions need to be able to, you know, uh, make a move on their end, right? Like we've, the government has made many moves already. But the teacher union's position is take my proposal, the original proposal, the only proposal, or we're going to keep striking. Does that seem like a reasonable negotiation to you? Right, like if, if the teacher unions have said, here's my proposal from the beginning. This process started six months ago. If you don't accept it, 
we're going to strike. If you don't, if you don't accept my increase in pay, $1.5 billion on taxpayers' back, we're going to strike. If you don't maintain 100% of hiring on seniority, not on quality or merit, we're going to strike. I'm sorry. That's not a fair um, you know, reflection of how you negotiate. You need to be able to, it takes two to tangle, right? You know, the expression. So we're prepared to work with them to find ways to protect uh, the priorities of the people, including classroom sizes. We're maintaining the lowest ones, as, as I just mentioned, for the earliest years. But it requires the union to be able to have some flexibility as well. And I think it's really unfair that parents saw elementary teachers go out, their union go out for a second day this past week. They added to the escalation, increased it, after I made a commitment in writing to maintain full-day kindergarten. That seems to be really inconsistent with, um, with uh, putting kids first. Because if, if I gave you that writing, commitment in writing, you'd think you would send a good set of signal to the union. And in good faith, we want to work with them to get a deal. But they've got to be reasonable. You can't ask me to raise taxes on low- and middle-class people to pay higher wages and benefits for those that make in and around $90,000 a year. That's just not right. And the government's going to stand up for taxpayers in this negotiation, but also to make sure that the education system works for the students, not for the unions. And I think it's important we have that political, political courage to say that. I have two yes or no questions. First one is, again, will your government bring back the average class size back to 20 to 1, as it was in the 2018, 2019 academic year, yes or no? Is it possible? I, I've, just, I've just answered that question. We're, we're always negotiating with the unions to find innovative ways to keep no, class sizes yes down. I'm asking yes or no. Is it possible or not? Well, it's, 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 not, it's not a yes or no question. It all depends on the unions being willing to if, be reasonable on their end. If they're willing to take off the salary increase condition from the negotiation uh, uh, but, 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 but respect, you're asking me to negotiate in public with you today, and I can't do that. I appreciate the question, but, but I'm not going to get a deal through today's interview with you this morning. As much as I want to, and you seem like a very reasonable man, I would love to negotiate with you. Unfortunately, that's not the best practice. Okay, and, and parents uh, want me to get a deal. But the point is, the yeah. answer is, there are, I am open to any option, honestly, that keeps classroom sizes down that improves quality, that makes merit the guiding principle of hiring, that keeps compensation on 1%. If we can achieve all those things, yes, I'm very open to having those discussions at the table, but the union's got to be open to those ideas too. They can't tell me, take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, we're going to keep striking. That's just not fair, and that's my sort of point to you. Because I'm asking this, the parents can uh, force the union or the teachers to go and negotiate in this regard because they are telling the stories to the parents. So if we have a clear right. picture about this, they can go and talk to the teachers uh, to go mm -hmm. and negotiate in something else. And one more thing, uh, Minister, um, uh, this is about the parents' uh, consultation on regards to this uh, e-learning and the class size. I think, uh, I believe, uh, the Ministry of Education has... Uh, done a survey or, or the consultation with the parents regarding this class size increase and the e-learning. Uh, when do you think that we can see that uh, results uh, of the consultations which you have done with the parents? Yeah, I mean, we've consulted widely. I've also, as my capacity as minister, held many roundtables, meetings, one-on-ones. I've done a significant amount of listening to the people of Ontario. And that consultation is what informs my decision to reduce the classroom size average from 28 to 25. That's why I reduced the online learning numbers from four to two. Now we're before bargaining, we're negotiating right now. So obviously there's some things that are being the element of discretion for the negotiating table. But having said that, I think people can see that we've been informed by their opinions and we've made decisions publicly that I think move towards their positions. And what I'm hoping is the polling, the data also tells us in the public that the teacher unions are not on the right, right side when it comes to the hiring regulations, when it comes to hiring based on seniority, which they prefer not merit. They're on the wrong side of public opinion on compensation, where the, where the public says, look, you're being fair. You're offering them a $750 million increase, but anything above that is not right. The public stands with us on a couple of fundamental issues as well. So, you know, in, this, in these negotiations, it's about trying to find a balanced approach that puts kids first. And my message to you as, I, as I'm about to depart from uh, today's discussion is that we're going to continue to stand 
working hard for parents, opposing strikes, and really emphasizing to them that in the meantime, while we're offering financial support to make this a bit less taxing on you, we're going to work hard to get a deal that keeps your child in class. Very final question, uh, Minister. What is the latest uh, on this negotiation uh, process? Uh, are you continuing or it's, it's, uh, it's on a hold? Uh, the, the process continues. We've negotiated with the Catholic teachers last week, French teachers last week, uh, elementary teachers the week prior, and the mediator knows we stand ready to negotiate at any time to get a deal. So they have to come. I'm going to have to excuse. I'm going to have to excuse myself because I, I know we initially planned on this being, I think, a five-minute interview. So it's I appreciate very much your opportunity and the time uh, you've given me. Thank you all for your listeners for uh, for uh, hearing our perspective from the government. And I hope I can be back on your show. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you for joining okay. us. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.